Good morning for the start of this vlog. This is the first reading vlog I've done in so long, so I'm actually kind of excited for it. I'm not normally very good at vlogs, but this one is going to be a good one because it is Crescent City Day, everyone. It is Crescent City Day. It is currently like 7 a.m. I'm just up because I'm excited. I was going to get up early and start reading the ebook, and then I was just kind of sleepy, and then I just kind of didn't do that. And just a heads up, I'm going to have all of the spoilers in this vlog. I cannot do spoiler spoiler free vlogs to like save my life, and I feel like I'm going to need all of the all of the space here to say exactly what I want to say. So, our you can just see the tips of Arya's ears in the background. Dorian's very stressed for today. We are keeping our fingers crossed for peace for Throne of Glass characters going into the book here. Truly the only thing that I will know. There are so many things that I care about. I'm very very concerned about Hunt. That him getting the slave tattoo back on him was so heartbreaking and so horrible to read at the end of Crescent City 2. I'm very nervous for him and Rune together in the dungeons. I'm very, I'm excited for Bryce because she's out in Valaris. Have fun. Yay. But here's the thing. If she is going to bring Throne of Glass people into the mix, they need all of the peace in the world. I swear to God, if something happens to any single one of the Throne of Cla Glass characters, except like maybe Adion. He's kind of still on my shit list for like years. Cut it. Cut the tape. So very nervous for that. Dorian, right? We're manifesting good things for Dorian. I'd love to see Dorian. Oh, I want to see Dorian so badly. I'm so excited for this. Oh my God. Excuse my air fryer as some background noise in this next clip. I have looked better. That is for sure. Okay. Well, at least you can see I have hair now. So I am about 145 pages and I think I'm on like chapter 12 or 13 so far. So, so far my initial thoughts are, first of all, the quick jump of the POVs honestly is making the book go by really fast. So I am liking that actually. Ethan and Therian's like POVs are still my least favorite just because like I'm not as invested in them and like where they're at in the story as I am with like Hunt and Rune and Baxian in the dungeons. The Hind there too or Bryce obviously with the Akatar crew. So like I just don't care as much but I actually am really intrigued by Therion with his deal with the Viper Queen. So I like that. And I think obviously the stuff with like the wolves is cool, but I just genuinely don't really care about the wolves to be honest. So like, I don't really care about them as much. Like I think it's moving quickly. One other thing, I was just actually texting with Sam about this from Sam Reads a Little and I was like, the torture is not as bad as I was anticipating, at least for right now. I mean, granted I could be eating my words here later on, but so far, I feel like the torture for Hunt and Rune and Baxian at least has not been as graphic on page. Like, it was obviously talked about that Baxian and Hunt had their wings both cut off again, which, like, brutal. But, like, when Hunt got that slave tattoo back on his forehead at the end of Crescent City 3, or Crescent City 2, genuinely, like, my gut, like, churned reading that. Like, there was something so, like, sickening about that. We're like, yeah, obviously we're hearing about these things that have happened to them or like their tongues getting cut out, but we haven't really like actually been in their heads when any of this torture has been going on. You know, it's all like in the aftermath when they're just kind of dangling there, which is still hard to read. Like obviously don't want to read these characters going through that, but also in, I, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to say something about throwing a glass here, um, about Kingdom of Ash. So if you haven't read Kingdom of Ash, skip ahead like 20 seconds because there is a part in that book that again, when Aelin was forced to kneel on shards of glass in front of Maeve, that it's like that genuinely, like I felt that like rip through me and I haven't felt that yet with the torture, which I'm kind of scared for. Cause I'm like, either it's not going to be as graphic or we're in for it. All that to say is at least right now, I feel like, you know, they're not in a great place, but at least they have each other and banding together. Okay, now kind of the most important thing with Bryce off with Akhtar. So honestly, I get Bryce's reservation because she doesn't know anything about them, even though we know that she can trust them. Like she doesn't actually know that she can trust them. So I totally get that. I get her hesitance. However, I was very bored for a while when she was just wandering around in these tunnels. I was like, can we please do somewhere? And then Nesta of all people joined her, which like, don't get me wrong, I do love Nesta. But I was like, can we get back with some of like my other favorites? <laughs> and then it's just her, the two of them like wandering through this tunnel for so long and I was starting to be like can we like 
got to move on with this. However, Asriel just showed up. So that's kind of fun. But again, I'm kind of like, can we get out of these tunnels, please? I'm interested by the stuff with the sword and the dagger and like how Az and her somehow have like that connection with them. I'm intrigued by that and how that's going to kind of play out. Uh, and also the fact that like they did banish their version of the Asteri like years ago. I don't know. I'm intrigued by it. Uh, I want all of the as content that we can get. So very happy to see him in the mix here. Uh, and yeah, I think that's kind of everything right now. That's literally all the POVs. Oh, and Lydia, I actually really am intrigued by the hind. I'm excited that we're getting more POVs of her and her rescue mission though, that she's talking about that she just recruited Flynn and Declan and that crew for. Mm, why do I feel like that's gonna fail? This is too early on in the book. We're 145 pages in and you already have this like rescue mission in two days. I fucking doubt it. So that makes me also very scared, but so far at least like I'm enjoying it, but it's definitely not like as, I, I just was really expecting right off the bat some like really horrible, horrible like POVs of being in their heads while they're being tortured. And I feel like so far it's been like a lot of the aftermath of it. So I feel like at least right now, feeling okay about it, but we'll see in like the next, 200 pages if that changes I guess. So I'm on chapter 28 which is page like 271 which now I'm starting part two so I wanted to do another check-in now that I guess I'm done with part one and I was just talking with Sam again because we're kind of like had uh, neck and neck right now with reading and so it's nice because we can kind of like check in but we were just talking about like is this it for the Akatar people? Oh my god my hair is a mess. I'm gonna be a mess this whole vlog but like is this it for the actor people like obviously i know that they're not going to be like the main characters in this book right this is crescent city this is not akatar i do not expect for them to have tons of involvement but i like to really only see nesta and asriel is kind of a bummer because i feel like there's still a lot of which i shouldn't even say that yet because we don't know there's still a lot of book left okay there's still like what 600 pages left but to like not know about Amran yet because I feel like Amran probably plays into things. The fact that like Reese's descendants, like again, like all this history that we just got laid on us is from like Reese's ancestors. So it's like, again, I want, like, I want to know that reaction. It's more like, I just feel like there's so much involvement in history between these two planets that it's like, I want to know then how some of the Akatar people fit into it. Anyway, so Bryce just basically like dipped out with <laughs> Nesta and Asriel. Here's the thing. It's been hard not to get frustrated with Bryce because, right, she doesn't know them like we know them. She doesn't know that she can trust them, that they're good people, okay? So all of her decisions are very logical to me of her, like, kind of working against them a little bit or, like, trying to trick them or trying to defy them a little bit. It all makes sense, okay? Logically, I understand it makes sense. And I'm trying not to be like Bryce, what are you doing here? Come on, they're like good people. Cause she doesn't know that, okay? And she has no reason to believe that they like don't mean her or her world harm. And also the same way around, like Nesta and Azriel have no reason, like again, we know that Bryce is a good person, but it's like they have no reason to believe that. And especially knowing like what kind of horrors lie in her world, they don't want that invading theirs. So it's like, I get it, I get it. But I am kind of like, can we all just get together and have some fun? I just want to see Az and Cassian with some machine guns and like seeing them take photos on a phone. Nesta or Bryce trying to explain to them how a phone works. Like that's the shit that I want. Like I just, I like that stuff. And I just liked that moment. And then like trying to picture all of them like sitting around a table with the phone sitting in between them all trying to be like, how the fuck does this work? It's like fun stuff to imagine, okay? The one thing I will say about this book is that the pace is pacing. Like I haven't felt bored once where in Sky and Breath, I felt bored often, so that's good. And also the fact that Ethan killed, what was her name, Siggy. Why, can why can't I remember what her full name is? The fact that he killed her already, damn, I did not see that coming. I really didn't. Uh, I for sure thought that she was gonna have a bigger role to play, but now I feel like Ethan's going to be the one. Like it's all of these things of offering an alternative to Sabine. That's what it's always been about. And I feel like Ethan is going to end up being the alternative to Sabine, right? Like that's where we're heading with that then. Also, I feel like the last big thing to comment on so far is Rune, is Baxian chewing Rune's hand off? Oh my God, ew, ouch. 
gross mm, the fact that they like literally resorted not being like oh my gosh i can't believe you to resort to that but like oh my god the fact that you literally thought that like that was the best solution for you was to try to chew rune's hand off oh my god he needs that hand okay <laughs> that was insane that was insane so anyways we'll see i guess where things go i don't know how much of this book i'm going to get done yet uh but i'm like half tempted to buy the ebook too because it's so much easier to read and my like hands are literally tired of holding this hardback but i'm not gonna do that because i don't want to spend 10 extra dollars because i'm cheap okay it's time to actually go to bed i didn't want to stop reading so i think what did i I'm on chapter, I think, 45 or 46, and my goal was to get to chapter 50 today, which I don't know if I'm going to make it to tonight, honestly, because I I don't want to, like, just... I obviously want to read because I want to find out, so I want to keep going, but I also don't want to, like, burn myself out on it. So, I don't know. We will see, but I... Basically, though, I am getting ready for bed, though, but I wanted to fill in my thoughts then of everything that I've read so far. Also, oh my god, my hair. I cannot stand my hair today. You know how some days, there are just some days where I just like hate hair. At least then it's off of my like neck. I can't even like stand the feel of it right now. Anyways, okay, so I don't remember the left. Oh, so I think Bryce had like returned to the world, right? I think that was the last time that I had updated. So a lot has happened obviously so hunt Baxian, and rune all got out which like kind of suspected so that's good glad that they got out and i actually really liked their whole like escape attempt and with the hind and her involvement with that and her releasing like the queen of the fire sprites i forget what her name is but i like that involvement and i think that's very like that's a very, like, Aelin move, I feel like, to release her. Now, like, Bryce and the Hind are trying to recruit her for, to, like, help fight for them. And it just is giving me very much Aelin Galathinius energy, which, like, still waiting. Aelin, where you at? There's that. The Hind having kids? What the hell? I did not see that coming, like, at all. I don't think anyone did, but that's pretty crazy. So, but I mean, I don't really know what that's kind of going to do to the story at all, like in regards to her. I don't trust the queen of the ocean though. I don't know. I don't trust her. I mean, I don't trust like any authority figure basically like ever in these books, but I really don't trust her. The escape attempt though, I really liked. Although once again, Rune, I'm like, I get it. I get it. Be nice to her. Be nice to her. Do you know what she just did for you? I don't know. Rune and I was kind of like, bro, I love you. I love you, Rune Dannon, but you gotta be a little nicer to the hound right or to the hind right now. I mean, they'll get over their shit, but like right now, you know, they're still kind of at odds. What Bryce got back with uh oh, with her fucking dad. Her he, garbage. This man just sucks. I just want him. I can't wait for him to die. Quite frankly, because, like, he's got to die, right? There's no way that this man is making it out of this series alive. So I'm kind of like, can we kill him sooner rather than later? Because I would love to see... I would love, honestly, for Rune to be able to be the one to kill him. So I'm hoping that that's why he hasn't died yet and why Bryce didn't kill him yet. Because when it was, like, revealed, you know, of what he did to Rune when he was a kid, Bryce was like, I'm gonna fucking kill him. And then she's with him. And granted, I know she has a lot of other things going on. And, like, he definitely has some information that could be helpful to them down the line. But I just, like, want to see this dude burn. So I'm just kind of waiting for him to hopefully get what's coming to him. Finn is off with Jessica, which we learned that she was actually a priestess, not, like, a witch to start. And he's trying to get a necromancer to bring back uh, Sigrid, which I'm intrigued by. And a uh, hypaxia right i think she just came in which i was trying to remember i was like where has she been because i actually don't think she's been mentioned this entire book at all and neither has celestina since she like turned them in basically and like reported them so i'm kind of like hypaxia i feel like we can trust her celestina mm, i don't know i don't know about that she's gonna have some major explaining to do if we're actually supposed to trust her and then okay and then i think the last thing was bryce now meeting back up with the crew on the ship. I was kind of let down by that a little bit. Was anyone else? I'm gonna be curious. I like her and Hunt are reunited. And I get it that like for the shock value of her like entering in this meeting all of a sudden with the ocean queen or whatever, 
that her and Hunt can't just like run to each other and like embrace whatever. I understand that in that moment. But then afterwards, they don't, I didn't really like feel anything at them reuniting. I thought that I would and I didn't. And it wasn't like this super like impactful, like emotional moment between them. And I was kind of bummed by that. Like I just wanted them to like hold each other. And they just didn't. I don't know. Granted, so then at the end of the like last part that I was reading about them, like they were like maybe thinking about hooking up and then they're like, can we just hold each other? And I'm like, yeah. But like, I don't feel like there's no like, oh my gosh, like this is like my mate. Like I'm thinking back to, once again, I'm going to spoil some stuff for some other Sarah J Moss books. So if you haven't read um, Akatar and Throne of Glass, then like skip ahead a minute or like probably just like a minute. But I'm thinking like Kingdom of Ash, when Rowan and Aelin found each other again, are you fucking kidding? That reunion of the two of them after she escaped was like gut wrenching. Like I, I felt every single motion of the two of them reuniting. And same then in Akatar and like Mist and Fury, like or uh, in Wings and Ruin when Reese and Feyre finally like reunited again. I felt that. I didn't feel like anything. It was almost like Sarah was like, we have other things going on. Let's like skip the reunion. And I'm like, no, I want the reunion. I care about that. So I don't know. I will, I will say I was a little bummed by that because I just wanted them to really just be like, oh, like you're safe. And also we really didn't get much of a reaction to Bryce seeing that Hunt has his slave tattoo back, except for like a glance at it. And he could like see that she was like sad about it. and then in her mind she was like oh yeah I'm gonna kill the Asteria but I'm gonna kill them even more for that but I'm like I want that like primal rage from her over that I don't know I just kind of felt like their reunion was a little bit anticlimactic and granted maybe it's because it was only like what a week or two that they were apart but I don't know and also when she was wandering around the Autumn King's house while they were still held captive I was like Bryce I get it you're also kind of captive right here right now but like come on don't uh, I don't care about you wandering through Rune's bedroom you have places to be and things to be doing okay I'm still really enjoying it like the pace is really good the POVs are like short and they jump around a lot so it's nice because it keeps the story moving uh so I'm I'm on it I'm really enjoying it a lot uh, it's just like, I don't, I haven't felt like that emotional tug in moments that I thought I was going to be feeling it. Like the only time that I remember being like, kind of like, like at the edge of my seat and like feeling that like heightened emotion was during the escape and like with Rune and all, oh, and, and when Hunt and Rune, when Hunt was like, had to choose one of them and like in his heart, he like knew they were going to kill Rune and like just the idea of him it, when he was in his head talking about how it's like worse this time around because he actually has to like watch people that he cares about be ripped apart in front of him. Like I just feel like there's not enough focus on all of the trauma that Hunt has gone through previously and then that's now kind of carrying over to this and I feel like kind of, kind of similarly how a lot of Reese's trauma gets like kind of was granted because we we're all in Feyre's head in that but like that kind of got like pushed to the side a little bit for other plot lines and things in those books and I don't know I just kind of I feel like that gets forgotten a lot and like Hunts has kind of gotten lost in the shuffle a little bit until we had that moment to kind of like remind us of what he's already been through. Dorian is just still waiting for him to come into the mix. Anyways, I, okay, bye. Anyways, I got to part three, so I wanted to do a check-in. I don't know what page that is then. Like, I'm so happy that Rune got to kill the Autumn King. I am really pumped about that. I was hoping that he would. I honestly thought that Bryce might but I was hoping that it would be like Rune to actually be able to be the one to do it because even though the Autumn King was obviously horrible to Bryce, I feel like that kill was kind of Rune's to do. So very happy that he had his moment. And I'm also liking that him and Lydia are getting back on the same page. Like they're mates, right? I feel like that's coming. But I very much like them and like their scenes and dynamics together. Although when they were like, oh, Flynn and Deck didn't show up. Like, hmm, that's weird. I'm like, guys, can we, can we go can we go look into that? I don't think they're just like not showing up, you know? And obviously they weren't. Oh, did I talk about Secret being now like a, a, a demon or something? 
that wasn't gonna end well. And also, once again, it only reiterates to me that I think that Ethan is going to end up being the alternative to Sabine. Like, I don't think that it is this Fender heir that is now half dead, half demon, whatever, roaming around. I don't think it's gonna be Ethan, right? And if it's not, then I will truly be surprised. But I feel like Ethan's gonna be the one that is the alternative to Sabine. And okay, so let's see. So they blasted the meadows which like obviously bad, but I feel like I don't quite have like the full scale of what that means in the big picture, except that the Asteria is like making their move and they blast like all the opium bases. So like all the rebels are basically wiped out. However, now we know that hell is on their side. I really liked that part of them. Go I was like, not another fucking cave conquest. I'm so sick of these caves with these drawings and things. Like I'm kind of over the caves, but at least it wasn't like that as longly detailed as it was when Bryce was with Nesta and Asriel at the beginning of the book with those caves. But at least with these ones now, we know about Hell and about Hunt's parentage. And like, I, as soon as he said like, welcome home, son, I was like, yes, yes. Cause I knew we were going to have to get some answers about Hunt's parentage and I kind of had the inkling that he had something to do with hell and like with his demon hunting like how he's just like adapted for that so I'm kind of pumped about that I think that's kind of cool and I like that he was like kind of made to charge Bryce's power up I think that's kind of neat that like they have that dynamic and of course that like at least the mates part wasn't like orchestrated by them so that was all natural but I do I do like that aspect of it and that now Bryce has that third part of the star and is like queen of the fae and I like I, I liked her struggle of kind of being like I don't know if like the fae are worth saving because she's only kind of seen the worst of them over and over again even though she has people around her like Rune like Flynn that can prove that fae are worthy of being good and that even like you know she encountered Reese and Nesta and Azriel and sees that like they're not all bad well Azriel I guess doesn't count he's Illyrian but anyways you know what I'm trying to say that she kind of had this moment of being like, they're not all bad. And especially, oh, what's the sister's name that Therian is now married to? This dude is just hopping around into these marriages. It's like wild. Honestly, I don't really know what to think about Therian's character right now. I think because he doesn't even know what to think about himself. He's very just like kind of flailing. Seems like he doesn't really have any sort of like long-term plan. Is just kind of like going with what works in the moment, which was like surrendering to the Viper Queen. And then ditching to go into the water and then ditching the water river ocean queen whatever to go on the boat and then now marrying Flynn's sister it's just very much like I don't think he has any like long distance goals I don't think like his his foresight is like nowhere to be found but honestly he's kind of entertaining in that way because he's a little unpredictable which is kind of fun uh because everyone else you know is a little more like calculated so it, I guess he's kind of like a fun add to the mix there. I'm trying really hard not to be annoyed with Bryce with her in regards to Hunt. And I feel like, you know, at the, at the end of this part two, like she did kind of like have a bit of self-awareness and whatever. But here's the thing. I was getting very annoyed with her when they were like in the caves and she leaped into the river, like without telling anyone anything and was just like, bye, like, come on, we got to do this. And Hunt was like, what the fuck? Like, you need to clue us in. We are all in this together. And like, yet you're not like cluing any of us. in. you're just like seemingly making these very rash decisions or like decisions that just only you have any insight to. And like, w if we're a team, you need to let us in on that. And she was, and immediately instead of being like, oh yeah, maybe I should do that. She was like, well, your guilt is weighing you down and like you're being unhelpful to me and like you don't even want to be here and it's kind of like back up a second he was literally just tortured with his friends your brother not knowing where his mate was or the fate of you at all for the second time in his life not knowing how he was going to get out of these circumstances thinking that he was going to be faced with having to choose which one of his friends to kill and you've just kind of glossed over all of that. Like, I get it. You also had your own journey. You've had your own things going on. But, like, objectively, Hunts has been worse so far, okay? I just feel like she's not giving him any sort of grace in that or any sort of, like, understanding up until this point. And I understand from her vantage point that she's like, I can't have you doubting me. We don't have time for doubts. We don't have time for, like, second-guessing things. Like, we need action. I totally understand that. So that's why I'm trying to be patient with her logically. However, I'm just kind of like feeling like I need to defend Hunt a little bit. I'm like, mm, 
don't do that. Don't do that with him. He's literally just trying to keep you safe. And like he has valid reasons of being like cautious. Okay. He has literally been tortured now twice and had to see his love die once. And now having it even like a thousand times multiplied because it's his mate and trying to keep her safe and like his friends. Like he just has more invested this time around. So I feel like he is totally valid in being cautious and things and wanting to kind of be like, hey, we need to maybe just like take a moment to evaluate things. I totally understand that. And I do understand from her perspective that she's like, we can't just like let this go. Totally get it. So that's why I'm trying to be patient. But I'm like, y'all two just need to sit down and have a conversation. You can spare 20 minutes to chat, okay? So far, they haven't really done that yet. And honestly, I'm like, y'all need to y'all need to sit down and have a conversation, okay? You sit down, you need to have a moment of being like, just relishing in the fact that you have each other. Even as So Bright, it's just got like that last kernel of power and she's like, I'm now queen or whatever. And like when they bowed before her, Again, I'm missing the emo- and I'm trying not to compare it, but I'm missing the emotional aspect that I felt to that, that I felt in, like, Throne of Glass with Aelin. You know, every single time someone, like, bowed to her, I felt like, oh, hell yeah. Like, I felt like, yes, like, rallying. I don't know. I don't feel that when, like, they all just kneeled before her. Like, obviously, I'm excited. I'm excited about where the story is going. And I still really like Bryce, and I like all of these characters. But I'm just missing, like, the emotional component for it. Which, like, to be fair, a lot of those emotions that I was feeling was by, like, books 5, 6, and 7 in Throne of Glass. Or, well, because, yeah. Assass yeah, because Assassin's Blade were coming out. So, like, Empire of Storms, Kingdom of Ash kind of territory is what I'm talking about. Like, that I felt that. And that's very deep into the series. Where this is only book three. And there's so many other characters going on in this story. That, like, the amount of time that we kind of have to be, like, invested is a little bit less, I feel like, with, obviously, Bryson Hunt. So, we'll see. Like, I'm sure that more of that is to come. But just so far, I haven't really, like, felt any of that yet. Okay, so everything that I just said... I should have just maybe read the next chapter into part three rather than stopping at part three I should have just read the next chapter and then made this check-in because finally finally they've had a conversation <sighs> it got the emotional kick I felt it I felt her pain I felt both of them and her finally acknowledging to hunt of saying like I'm sorry that what you've been through and like that I doubted you she's finally knows the weight like I think she just had to see it for herself she had to see it for herself the weight that Hunt has carried for years like from the last failed rebellion and now she finally realizes that weight after hearing what they did and now that she does get that that she can look at him and be like okay I understand and I understand your hesitance and I'm sorry. Like as heartbreaking as it is that that had to happen, like I'm glad that they've kind of had this moment now together to like realize. And even that she said that she's like, I think I was meant to come here to see that there is like the safe haven and that like we could choose to stay here. You know, her family's on the way. They could bring all the people that they love and care about and they could leave everything else behind because they are protected there. You know, the Asteri can't touch them there. And, or at least so far we think. I still don't like fully trust that like they can't invade and that all of a sudden they're not gonna like pop up there. But that they have this life that they could have if they wanted to just say to hell to everything. And like that Hunt has been tempted by and now Bryce has also been tempted by and that they both now have the roles of kind of reverse and he's like, no, like we can't do that. We need to fight and how she's like, I agree. But like, I, I now see the draw. I see what you've been kind of debating with and I understand it now. And like, I'm sorry for not like fully understanding about that. That's all I wanted. They just needed to have that talk. They also needed to have this moment together and... Okay, so I kind of take back what I just said. So if you were about to write a comment of being like, you're being too hard on Bryce, I get it. But they just needed to have a conversation. They have like not really had much of a conversation since they've both returned of like the consequences of everything that they've seen and like what is to come. And I feel like now they finally had that and I needed that. I needed that, so. It is done. It is done. I've actually been done for probably like close to an hour now, but I'm just now getting around to filming my update because Sam and I hopped on like a stream. So that way, like we could uh, read together, like a stream yard link, but it wasn't like live or anything. So it was just the two of us. So that way we could read the last like 150.
50-ish pages together because we were both pretty much neck and neck the entire time that we were reading. So then she hit a certain spot and she was like, I'm going to stop and I'm going to run some errands and let me know when you get to that and then we'll get on. And we read the last part together, which was really fun to do it that way because like I didn't have that last time when I read Sky and Breath and we were both very anxious heading into the last bit of the book so genuinely I don't know where my last check-in was with this I guess for right now the thing that I'm just trying to like wrap my brain around is how this ended and like how that didn't go the route that I thought it was going to go I genuinely thought Sam and I both said we were in for like another brutal cliffhanger and I didn't think that the battle was going to like wrap up up in this book like this book wrapped up like in a pretty tidy little bow which like I love that I'm very happy to see all of my people happy I'm happy that everyone was intact but I genuinely thought some I thought someone was gonna die for sure and I thought that it was going to be like a bloodbath and like a huge battle and I thought it was going to like end on a cliffhanger within the battle and that very clearly didn't happen. Um, first of all, everyone's intact. My prediction for who was gonna die, I honestly thought Therion might die because he's just very much been like aimlessly kind of floating about this book, making decisions, like rash decisions. And I thought that maybe he was going to like sacrifice himself and find purpose in that uh and like maybe and die but he didn't uh I mean not that I'm like mad about that he's fine enough like I'm I, I like I'm kind of neutral on Therion honestly um but like Ethan I love that he became prime I I thought that he was going to end up being like the heir I didn't know that he was going to be the prime in this book but I actually really liked how that all went down and that the prime was like you you sir are my heir Sabine fuck you and even though Sabine killed him in the end like still she got what was coming to her then the one other heir that who's now the reaper uh Sigrid she's like off and about so I mean that's like a loose end so that's the other thing it's like there's another book right and then Sam did look it up so there is a fourth one coming out but it'll be I think maybe like after the next Agatar book I don't know but I'm trying to already think like what like there's no other big bad enemies that at least we know of in their world currently. So I'm trying to like think of what, like is it really just going to be like a political rebuild book? I don't know, I mean we have like Ari the dragon who like we don't have a lot of answers on her, so like maybe her, Therion and uh, Sathia, who's Flynn's sister. Uh, we have like that though and then like her ordeal trying to get her ex-boyfriend back from the Viper Queen and the Viper Queen is another one that could explore more the wolves like I think Ethan and Perry like I think Perry is gonna have a could have a bigger role um but as far as like Rune Lydia Bryce and Hunt I feel like their stories all kind of like wrapped up pretty well so I'm like are they still going to be in the I mean I feel like they'll probably be in future books but it's like are they gonna be central to it I don't know uh I do really like obviously Rune and Lydia being mates I was like y'all just you know what you are you know what you are uh I did obviously like that I honestly really didn't cry that much in this book I literally only like shed a few tears at the end when Bryce created the black hole and she went into it and then seeing Hunt like sit on the outside and then when he was like I have to go like he's like I cannot leave her I have to go after her even if it means that I die too and then when that like mech suit came up and then he instantly knew that it was Shahar <sighs> that was beautiful that that got me choked up a little bit that really got me choked up and then when she got to go and then when like he got in the suit and he went after Bryce and then got her and brought her back and then like trying to revive her and stuff I'm like first of all there's no way she's dying so I'm like let's just figure out how we get her back to life here uh and then Jessica trading her soul for her I actually really liked that because I always liked her and Bryce's dynamic I kind of brought her full circle and you know she kind of has had done all she needed to do so I I liked her trading her soul for Bryce's and then oh my god when Bryce was like in that other world and she saw Danica and Connor and the pack of wolves that that got me that got me and Sam both we were both crying at that part uh but then like for the most part like it ended happy and another thing that I really did like was when Connor and Hypaxia went to the under king and like and he got to talk to Connor quickly Oh, I just really liked that because that was just like a sweet moment between them. Um, and then obviously now Hypaxia being like the head of Flame and Shadow. That's super cool. I like her character too. So I could definitely see more happening with her. Celestina, honestly, I was kind of like, Hunt, if you want to roast her, full send, full send. I mean, obviously he pulled back. That was the right thing to do. But I was kind of like, 
if you do it, I'm not gonna blame you. You do what you gotta do. And then of course Bryce was like, held him back, whatever. <laughs> be a good person. I still feel like there's more exploring to do with her and Hunt's powers. So like maybe see that play out. I'm trying to just think like, honestly, I know that like it was not an easy battle, but honestly it felt kind of easy <laughs> in terms of like banning the Asteri. Cause like the one she killed fairly quickly with the swords and then the other one she was, a so another one of them got like taken care of by the demon prince as we assume. And then uh, the other one, she like got in that black hole. It, honestly, like I was kind of like, oh, that wasn't like that bad. <laughs> I mean, it was bad, obviously. But when I'm thinking like Kingdom of Ash, how many battles did they have to fight? Like that whole entire book was like battle after battle after battle. And then even like A Court of Wings and Ruin, like that battle, it's like a bloodbath. There's like a lot of layers to it where this one I felt like it was over fairly quickly. Um, so again, not like complain about that. I do personally really like the battle sequences. So I was kind of bummed that we weren't like in the front lines really at all because obviously Bryce and Hunt and Rune and Lydia, they are all off doing their own separate parts. Uh, but you know, it was just, it was different, you know, it was just different than how the other books have ever gone in her series, which is like not a bad thing. It's just, you know, I was expecting more of like frontline bloodbath kind of action. So Lydia's sons getting them out. Oh my God. How, how, how could I forget? I like freaked out a little bit and then I was like Sam what part are you at and she was a few pages behind and then I was like okay just let me know let me know when you get to this part Brannon as soon as soon as that name came out of Lydia's mouth I was like you know you know what ignited in me was this <laughs> was this I was waiting the whole time for the throne of glass folks to pop up which they didn't it's fine whatever but as soon as she said Brannon I was like I know exactly who that is and who you're talking about. And then when she was like, oh yeah, my dad was like from some royal fey line from another world. I was like, oh my God, cause you're, are you and Aelin Galathinius somehow in the same bloodlines, dear God. And then when she was like shooting fire, I was like, holy shit. Oh, I just, mm, any, any little scraps of anything that was like leading towards the throne of glass people, I was like clinging to. So I was really, really hoping for like a random appearance or when all of a sudden Bryce was falling through space, I was like, is she gonna like pass through? You know how like Aelin did? I was like, is she gonna like pass through the throne of glass people? But no, sadly not. But I think, I think she's gonna write, I think Sarah J. Moss is gonna write another throne of glass book. I would die. I would die a little bit. Um, also, I really liked the moment between Nesta and Bryce's mom. Oh, that was just sweet. And also seeing Cassian, even for the smallest moment, that was nice. Um, I didn't expect the Actar people to have a huge presence in this book because obviously this is Crescent City, like this is an Actar. But I will say I was kind of surprised about that there wasn't a little bit more of them in here just because I, in my head, I'm like, there's no way that after Bryce left, that Reese and Amran and Azriel and Nesta, they're all just sitting around and being like, hmm, that was like really weird when that woman came here with a phone, wasn't it? Like, wow, yeah, that was odd. And just going about their everyday life. Like there's no fucking way that they were just doing that. So then when when Bryce opened that portal back up and got the mask, again, they like kind of seemed to just be, or Nesta at least was just chilling. And I was kind of like, are y'all have to be doing something. There's no way that you guys are just sitting around twiddling your thumbs after hearing about the Astir or the Daglin from their world or now in another world. Like I felt like they had to be doing something. So I was half expecting them to show back up and like have maybe like a bigger part, uh, like at least towards the end there and the battle or something. But they didn't need them. I loved this one. I really, really loved this book. The pacing was good in it. It was just like a really solid book, to be honest. Uh, I definitely loved it more than Sky and Breath. Sky and Breath, I was bored in a lot of the time. I felt like that book moved really slow. And even like the beginning of Crescent City one at points was slow, where this book, I feel like never really had like a down moment. Like it moved pretty quickly. So I think so far, it's hard to get over the feeling that I had reading like the last chapter of Sky and Breath, you know, but this truly I think is probably my favorite out of the series so far, just because like as a whole, it was, I think the 
best where like there were certain moments in Crescent City 1 and in Crescent City 2 that I feel like more emotionally drawn to and more emotionally connected to than any moments in here. However, this book as a whole, I feel like is stronger. So, and who knows, as I sit with it, that might change a little bit. Like I might have more like emotional connections to this one. Hope for some Throne of Glass content in the future from Miss Sarah. So we'll just have to see. So anyways, God, I'm sitting on my couch here decompressing. And you know what I just realized that I have no peace about? It was literally never brought up again that Hunt, or not that Hunt, that Rune and Reese look identical. That was literally never talked about again. Clearly, he's some sort of descendant, right? Do we know who Rune's mom is? I mean, I guess it's like, maybe we're just supposed to like imply that he's obviously a descendant, like how Lydia clearly is from another world. But like, I need closure on that. Sarah, I need more. Final update. <laughs> Dorian just wants to be a part of the video. So let me try to prop you up. Okay, and now you can see Dory too. So it's a few days, it's, what is it? It's Saturday, February 3rd. So now it's been, I don't even, oh my gosh. It's been a few days since I have finished Crescent City 3. How's the flame and shadow? Okay, can you literally stand? Thank you. And I just wanted to give a quick, now that I've had like some days to digest and I've also seen some other people, rude. Uh, and now that I've had a few days to sit with it and I've been seeing some other people finishing it and some other people's opinions, I just wanted to add in my last minute thoughts here is that yes, there are obviously a lot of things that I still want answers to. Where did, I was expecting maybe like some where did Amrin come from? Why is it never mentioned again that Reese and Rune look like twins? That's literally never talked about again. I would like to know that. Reese's sister, when Az said uh, about Celine when she came on the thing and he's like, oh my God, she looks like Reese's sister. I just want like more answers about her in general. With like uh, Lydia, obviously there's something to do with Throne of Glass world that I'm excited to hopefully potentially get explored because I just want any Throne of Glass. Oh, you can't even like really see it any Throne of Glass content I can get, obviously. Main complaint I feel like I'm seeing a lot of people say is like that there's not enough crossover or like not enough Akatar characters. But here's the thing, like this is a Crescent City book and I'm not mad at the amount that we got from the Akatar characters. Would I have loved to see more Reese, more Feyre, more Cassian, like sure. But also like this wasn't their story. And obviously I would have liked more answers, but I think we're still gonna get those to come in more books. And I think if she ever wanted to do like a big crossover book that is like Throne of Glass, Avatar, and Crescent City all in like equal parts, you know, she could just write that separately, like a combination book. I don't think she'd ever actually do that. I think for the most part with what we got, it was like, I feel like it was sufficient enough for this story. So I don't know. I'm not mad at the amount of crossover. I And also here's the thing. I don't watch theory videos. I don't like them. I don't want to have expectations too high ever. Obviously I had my own things that I was kind of hoping, like I was really hoping during a final battle that maybe like they were, it was like an all moment, all hope is lost kind of moment. And then all of a sudden like a portal opens and it's Aelin and Rowan and Dorian and them coming through. I would have loved to have seen that, but I don't want to like watch theory videos and get it in my head thinking like that I know what's going to happen and then be disappointed when it's not. So I didn't really have any of those expectations when I went into this book. I wasn't like disappointed by that. I thought, obviously, yes, I, I would have taken more if we would have gotten more, but I don't think that it like ruined the book or anything. I thought this book was great. And the longer I sit on it, the more I'm like, this is my favorite book in the series so far. I thought this was great. I thought the pacing is perfect. And it's still, I think it's one of her best paced books. And I don't know, I just really enjoyed it a lot. And I think, again, a lot of people are being really harsh on Bryce for how she, like, was with the Akatar people. And, like, granted, I even said that, that I'm, like, logically, I know she shouldn't be trusting them. Me, personally, obviously, like, we know that they're trustworthy, so, like, I wish she would. And I even think I said that earlier on in one of the clips. But, like, log I was never, like, actually mad at her for that, where some people are like, I hate Bryce. I don't get that. She's right not to trust them. She doesn't know them. The other thing, though, that I still stand by on was that she was too hard on Hunt coming out of torture like I don't think that that was focused on like enough same with like Rune and Baxian like they went through an ordeal and like we 
it's not really like acknowledged that much. Uh, and Bryce was kind of like, mm, get over it. <laughs> so I don't know. I still like that. I still feel valid on. Um, but like Bryce with the her people being pissed at her for that. I'm kind of like, I don't know what you expected. Like she doesn't know them like we do. So like I still think that this was a great book. I thought it was so fun. I enjoyed it. And I hope that we only get like more crossover content going forward. Uh, and I did see in the Time article about like many fans speculate, Azriel and Elaine. <sighs> so that's not a confirmation, obviously, but like her people had to have read that and approved that. So I'm like, Sarah, what are you doing? Is that either like a, a little like subtle confirmation kind of thing? Or is that like a, huh, you guys are thinking that? Mm, think again. I don't know. I don't know. I personally am an Asriel and Gwyn person, but you know, I just think it's kind of convenient for the three bat boys to end up with the three sisters, but also like, whatever. I'm just excited to get an Asriel book. So, and also the bonus scenes, the bonus scenes. So I've read the one of Nesta, Bryce and Asriel, and I knew it. I knew that Asriel was my type of dude. How when Bryce is playing all of the music and As loves the club music, as a boy after my own heart, I also love club music. I just know that he would go to raves with me. I just know that he would. I know that he would like love Sullivan King. Like, I'm just picturing what I would put on his playlist. Like I'd put on some Millennium. Like I said, I'd put on some Sullivan King, some Nurko, some Seven Lions. Oh, I think he would love Seven Lions. Oh, I just really liked the fact. And then also like the screamo music too, or like the metal that then came on when Bryce and Nesta were both like, no, thank you. And Az is kind of like bopping his head. Like, I think he'd love Bad Omens. So he's a man after my own heart. So I really liked that bonus scene. And also, so I read that one. I read the Rune and Lydia one because that was the one that I have in my book. I thought that was cute. Loved that. Uh, and then, you know what the, one of my friends, Megan and I were talking about is what she wished was a bonus scene was the Akatar people trying to figure out Bryce's phone. You know how they like confiscated it from her? Cause I thought that that was funny. And I thought that was a funny point in the book, just picturing them all sitting around, just like staring at a phone. And I think that would have actually been like a really fun bonus scene is to see all of them like chatting around dinner of being like, we literally have a random alien in our dungeons <laughs> who like brought this device. Like, what is this? thought that would have been a good bonus scene so okay I think that's now officially where I'm going to close this vlog out if you made it to the end you're a real one because I feel like this is gonna be a long video full of rambling like already this has been seven minutes of me rambling about what so anyways that's it for today's video I'll see you when I see ya